Hey guys, this is my full beginner guide to Elite Dungeons 1. I hope this video is able to help out anyone who is looking to either learn or get better at Elite Dungeons 1. I hope you guys all enjoy the video. On screen right now you will see the requirements and useful items for this dungeon. For the requirements you're just going to need tier 80 armor and tier 90 weapons. Uh, you will also need the Greater Barge and Greater Flurry ability codex. Um, and also level 95 prayer with curses unlocked so that you can use uh, turmoil and also soul split. Uh, as for the useful items, a vampirism scrimshaw is highly recommended uh, just so that you can heal throughout the dungeon while damaging enemies. The curse of the black stone quest is also very helpful as it provides a passive 10% damage reduction inside elite dungeons. The corbicular rex dinosaur perk which requires level 114 farming, gives you 40% increased critical chance for the Meteor Strike ability, which is very helpful because when you crit with Meteor Strike, it generates 10% adrenaline per crit, so the more crits the better. The Defense and Strength skill cape perks, if you aren't maxed, just chuck them in your Combatant's cape, they are very useful as the Strength cape perk increases the damage of Dismember, and the Defense cape perk can act as a sign of life and bring you back to life if you happen to die during the dungeon. Uh, as for auras, the best aura to use is of course the Berserker aura. Uh, if you don't feel like taking increased damage or using a Berserker aura, then some alternatives are Dark Magic, uh, Majorat, if you'd like just an Accuracy aura, which is useful for some parts of this dungeon, the Brawler aura is good for melee. And uh, if you would just like some passive healing, then the Vampirism Aura is also alright to use. Getting Bladed Dive is also a useful item. You can unlock this from Shattered Worlds. It's sort of like Surge, except you direct where it goes just by clicking on the ground. Just helps you get through the dungeon a little faster. Um, and also the Mobile Perk to make sure that Bladed Dive and Surge are on 10 second cooldowns rather than 20 second is also very helpful. So that you can zoom around the dungeon as fast as possible. As for a summoning familiar, I would recommend using a Ripper Demon, as that will help increase your damage. Whether you want to use scrolls is completely up to you, and if you would like some extra food, then you can also bring a Yak instead of a Ripper Demon. If you have them unlocked, I would highly recommend using a Dominion Mines as well for Seriu on the Black Crystals part of the fight. I won't be using them in this guide, but they will help your damage significantly. So getting into the gear and inventory setup, you just want to use your best melee armor. I would recommend at least tier 80 armor. I'm going to be using trimmed masterwork uh, as my melee armor. And then for your pocket slot, a scrimshaw of vampirism. Uh, your best cape, uh, I'm going to be using a kiln cape. Uh, you can use a max cape, combatant's cape. I would recommend you bring at least a strength and defense cape perk inside your combatant's cape or whatever cape you're using. Uh, for the amulet, I'm just going to be using an amulet of souls. If you have an essence of finality, it is better to use, but this is a beginner guide, so I'm not going to be using completely maxed gear. If you can make them, alloy armor spikes do help a little bit with clearing out the dungeon and do provide a little bit of damage on the bosses, but not necessary. Uh, just dry gores or copishes. I don't own dry gores, so I will be using copishes in this guide. And then for your glove slot, uh, cinder banes are the best in slot gloves to use for the poison damage. And then for your ring slot, a Asylum Surgeons or Ring of Death, completely up to you which one you prefer to use. Uh, I like to use the Asylum Surgeons ring. For your aura, uh, I won't be using an aura in this guide, but some good auras to use. Uh, Berserker, Dark Magic, if you want to you can use Brawler, but that's just an accuracy aura, not a damage increasing aura. And also Majorat is a decent one to use if you have it. As for the inventory setup, you just want to bring a halberd type weapon. For me it's going to be the Noxious Scythe. If you can't afford a Noxious Scythe, then the second best option is probably a Dragon Rider Lance, and otherwise a Masuda's War Spear. Uh, enhanced Excalibur with mobile on it for bladed diving and surging around the uh, dungeon, and also for the active to get a little bit of healing inside the boss fights. Uh, a shield switch, for me it's going to be a Calphite Defender, and whatever your shield is, you just need to bring a shield to use Resonance and Reflect. Ring of Vigor for ultimate abilities and Luck of the Dwarves, just for a little bit of extra loot. And then we have some Lucky Charms for also extra loot, and then a Dragon Battle Axe for the special attack for certain parts of the boss fights. Just your standard potion setup, you want to bring a Overload, Prayer Renewal, and Adrenaline Potion, whatever Adrenaline Potion you're using. 
uh, weapon poison for increased weapon poison procs and damage and then just a prayer potion some vulnerability bombs and then fill the rest up with your food of choice I'm going to be using Guthix Rest Potions and Blue Blower Jellyfish. If you'd like to use something like Saradom and Bruise, then that is fine. And I also bring a couple uh, Rocktails just for panic eating if something goes wrong. So getting into the dungeon, you just want to start off by potting up, of course, and putting your prayers on. And uh, just heading down and bladed diving through this left corner. That way you don't aggro the two dudes standing at the front of the room. Then you just want to stand uh, in between all these enemies, equip your scythe, and just use Hurricane, Quake, and Cleave, just prioritizing your AoE abilities. Also remember that Flurry is a dual wield AoE ability, and you can use that as well. Then you want to just surge all the way down to this big group of enemies, stand directly in the middle of them. If you want to have your Vampirism and Scrimshaw equipped, that's fine. And then you just want a Meteor Strike, followed by a Hurricane and a Quake. Remember that every crit generated for 30 seconds after Meteor Strike is cast will generate 10% Adrenaline. So, you will always have lots of Adrenaline after uh, casting Meteor Strike in a big group of enemies. For these mage enemies in the dungeon, you want to anticipate before you start attacking them because they do stun you. So it's good to have anticipate up to avoid the first set of stuns. And I just like to barge one, Assault Bleed, and then Flurry another, and then finish off the third one with some bleeds and a basic. Again, we're approaching some more mage enemies here, and so what you want to do is anticipate, barge the healer, and then decimate him as well, that way he'll heal himself. Then you can stand, if you stand on this spot where I am with your scythe, you can hurricane quake cleave and hit all four surrounding enemies, and then stand in the center of these three and use flurry, and that should finish off those ones. Once all of those four are dead, just assault the last standing guy. And then that will be done. I would recommend having your uh, Vampirism, Scrimshaw, and Mage Prayer on for most of this part of the dungeon, as you will take a lot of damage without having Mage Prayer on. Again, anticipate. Stand in between the enemies and Hurricane and Quake. If you target your cleave to the one on the side, it'll also hit the dude in the middle. So a good way to speed up your dungeon is just maximizing the area of effect abilities that you have available. Once you finish those mages, just head down to these dragons. Once you pass this line on the path, you can blade a dive surge through and it'll bring you straight over to the next path. And then you just want to head down towards the right, anticipate before you barge into the mages again. If you stand in between all of them, you can use a flurry and a cleave and then target one on the left and hurricane, then target one on the right and quake. The reason you do that is because hurricane and quake deal extra damage to the target that you are targeted on and a little bit less to the surrounding enemies. You wanna make sure that you're focusing the most high HP target. During this guide, there is an ability tracker above my inventory if you wanna have a look what I'm using. So here you just wanna start off with a Zerk, barge into the boss, use a Von Bomb and two basics, decimate sever, place your assault bleed, then fury and then destroy. In two hits, he's going to do a melee attack. So as he bends down, you just wanna put melee prayer on and then wait for the ability to hit and switch to range prayer again. As the water cannon approaches, you want to resonance it, and then just continue DPSing. So all the abilities I'm using are tracked above my inventory. You can soul split throughout the whole time he's doing the water cannon, and then he's going to place the smoke on you when you get back. You just want to blade a dive out, place melee prey on, anticipate and freedom for your barge timer, and then barge back in and place a flurry bleed. Put soul split on and then reflect for the water cannon, and then continue DPSing. At this point, you want to stop using your thresholds and start building because we're going to be zerking in a second. So with the smoke again, you're going to blade a dive out, place a uh, sorry, not place a bomb, bomb, melee prayer, and then zerk and barge back in. Since I'm not using limitless, I'm just going to wait for the water cannon resonance and then use a destroy followed by an assault. The reason I'm not using Limitless is because this is a beginner guide, and so we're just keeping it simple. Again, he gives you another smoke, bladed dive out, barge back in, make sure you place melee prayer on every time he does the smoke because he's going to follow it up with a melee attack. I waited for my barge cooldown there so that I could get a flurry bleed and then follow it up with a hurricane and that's the end of the boss fight. 
Remember to re-vulnerability bomb the boss a minute into the fight, as vulnerability only lasts one minute. You then just want to go through the door and continue with the dungeon. If you have a look here, the enemy next to me right now is a Hanto Cell Sword. You want to make sure that if they are near you that you have your melee prayer on, because they do do a special attack where they say die by the blade and then they rip into you with some pretty heavy melee attacks. If you don't have melee prey on, you will die quite quickly. I would recommend saving Devotion, however, for this next part with the Death Lotus Rangers. I'm going to purposely aggro the Death Lotus Rangers right here. And what you want to do is, if you want to kill them, you can, but alternatively, you can just focus on the three Zealots that you actually need to kill. And when the Death Lotus Rangers do their chat line, which is their spec, you can use Devotion which will last about 9 seconds, and each time you kill an enemy that will extend, so you can get a total of 20 seconds of devotion. As you can see, those rangers are not doing any damage to me at all, because I have devotion active, and then you can just finish off the zealots, and then surge down. This part, you just surge, bladed dive all the way through, as you don't need to kill any of these enemies, except the, the zealot standing at the barrier here. Again, I would recommend having your vampires and scrimshaw on for a majority of the dungeon, as you do take high amounts of damage and you cannot soul split uh, certain parts of the dungeon. Once you kill that zealot, just surge all the way through to the next three standing at this barrier. Stand uh, in the center of all three and just hurricane quick cleave. Once they're all done, just head up the right or left side towards the next door. And then there are a whole bunch of zealots that you need to kill. I would recommend standing in the center using Flurry first, and then equip your Scythe and target the Zealot on the outside and use Hurricane and Quake. The reason you don't want to target the ones in the center is because you've already lowered their health with Flurry, and you always want to target the target with the most health on them, as your Hurricane and Quake will deal more damage to them. Anticipate. Barge the one on the left, and then Assault Bleed them and Flurry in the middle. The reason you barge the one on the left is because they are the one that are going to get healed by those two mages sitting on the side. So if he dies first, then nothing will get healed. For this next part, all you need to kill are the two Eastern Mercenaries over here, and then the Renegade Minify Warriors at the back of the room. The Hanto Cell Swords are walking over to me here, so I'm just going to put Melee Prayer on. If you need to Devotion, do that. Once you've killed the Eastern Mercenaries, head down to the back of this room and put yourself up against the wall and just use a Meteor Strike followed by a Hurricane and a Quake. The reason we're standing here is so that the Hanto Cell Swords get trapped behind and only one of these warriors can attack you at a time and it just makes it very easy to soul split and just relax. For this next part, if you are in line with this blue barrier where this shadow is and if you surge forward, you will not aggro the Death Lotus Rangers that are standing behind the pillars. The problem is, if you stay there too long and people start attacking you, then the Death Lotus Rangers will turn around because the they will pull aggro due to the other guys attacking you. It doesn't really matter if they do, just put your range prayer on, come to the east side here, kill the four zealots, and then when the Death Lotus Rangers do their spec like he's doing now, you just activate your devotion and uh, continue DPSing the four zealots, and once they're done you just tally out. Teleport back in, reload your preset, and we're going to start the fight with Masuda. You want to start with melee prayer on, and just start off with a Zerk Adrenaline Potion rotation. Place your Von Bomb, followed by a Decimate, Decimate and Sever. Place your Assault Bleed, Fury, and then Destroy. When he starts spinning, you want to make sure that you wait about a second or two, and then activate Devotion. So here he starts spinning use another ability, then activate Devotion. And while he's spinning, he's going to be walking, so you can just use a Slaughter and a Dismember. You want to make sure you use your Slaughter now, because it'll just instantly get that triple damage from him moving. And then once your Destroyer is off cooldown, use that, and then followed by Assault. At this point, his next special attack is the Mage attack. Uh, so you're going to see all these purple clouds start forming. The small clouds don't matter too much. When you see the big clouds, put your Mage Prayer on, switch to your Shield, and Reflect. You don't have to reflect, but it just makes it nice and easy to tank, so that there's no risk of dying. But you definitely want to make sure you have your Mage Prayer on. Continue DPSing, and when Masuda starts spinning again, just surge away from the boss, and keep a safe distance, because even though it looks like he's far away, if you are about three squares away from him, he will still be in range because of the animation 
of him walking there is quite slow. Once you get him to 275k HP, you'll phase the boss. And then you just want to put your Mage Prayer on and start killing the Thrashing Waters. You want to make sure that when you kill them, you are in melee distance, either one or two tiles, because then you will gain damage reduction. You'll see on, the, uh, on my buff bar, the first thing on my buff bar is damage reduction. You gain 5% per Thrashing Water that you kill while in melee distance, which will help you on the last phase, because that is damage reduction towards Masuda's uh, magic special attack. You can bladed dive, if, if you want to reset bladed dive, you need to make sure that you bladed dive directly on the target, not near the thrashing water. So bladed dive on the thrashing water and then kill it within the next two basics and it'll reset bladed dive cooldown. A few things you can do to make sure you stay on top of these thrashing waters is utilize your thresholds. Hurricane is a very good threshold to use on these because it's two very quick hits which can instantly kill a thrashing water. Also make use of flurry and assault because you can cancel them straight away as uh, after one hit, but it'll actually do two because it does the second hit on the end of your global cooldown. And just make sure you're utilizing your surge and blade of dive, and you can still also util utilize your barge to barge onto the enemies as well. Once you reach about 65% damage reduction, you're approaching the end of the phase. And uh, when Masuda does the chat line, that means that he is done standing around doing nothing, and he's going to start using range attacks. I would recommend keeping your Mage Prayer on, because he can do Mage Specs every 3-5 to five attacks. So until you get your Zerk off and you're ready to DPS, keep your Mage Prayer on and then switch over to Soul Split. If you have a Vampirism Scrimshaw on, you can just camp Soul Split, and you'll be completely fine as long as you have 60% or more damage reduction from the Thrashing Orders. And you just want to do a full Zerk rotation. And once your Zerk is over, apply a Slaughter and walk under him so that he moves. That way you get your triple damage. And then just continue using your thresholds and your basics. If uh, Masuda is above 50k HP when Zerk becomes off cooldown, then just Zerk again. Uh, I won't be Zerking again in this fight because he uh, is dead by the time my Zerk comes off cooldown, so there's no point. But if you feel you need the extra damage, then just Zerk again when it's ready. As long as you have damage reduction from the Thrashing Waters, this phase of the fight will not be that difficult, as you can just soul split most of the damage. In this next room, just disregard all of the defense pylons except the one in the middle and then the two by the chest. I like to barge the one in the middle, use a flurry bleed and one basic, and stand next to the chest like this, and you can hurricane quake with your halberd weapon to hit both of the defense pylons. Tally out, grab your preset, and then you want to come back into Seryu and put your Mage Prayer and your Damage Prayers on. Start with a Zerk, Adrenaline Potion, place your Von Bomb and then two Basics followed by an Assault and just continue with your Zerk rotation. With the Tendril attack that he does each time he slaps his tail there on the left side of the screen, you just want to move one step either north or east and you'll be safe. If you step one step south or west, you will not be safe so just be wary of that. As you can see, that's why I stand on the west side of the boss, so that I can just keep stepping one step east. That way, if he does four tendril attacks in a row, I can still just keep stepping over and not have to worry about running around like a headless chicken. Throughout this fight, when Seryu takes a deep breath, you can just either res it, uh, you can also walk under him to avoid it, or you can just tank it if you have Mage Prayer on, it won't do too much. At 52 seconds, the first set of hands will come out of the wall, so they are on the east side of the arena as you see them there. So uh, when you hit 52 seconds, you want to make sure that you try and avoid uh, the walls because it is dangerous. You can't really see them coming out until it's too late. So if you're near it, when the hands come out of the wall, you're pretty much dead. Once the boss reaches 7.26 mil HP, you want to use Natural Instinct and then build to full and use a Dragon Battle Axe. That's going to help us up on the crystals with a little bit of extra damage. When the boss hits 7.2 mil HP, that's the phase point. Bladed dive to the jump spot and just have your Ring of Vigor on and Zerk. Barge into the crystal, place a Von Bomb, and then just build to 50%. Since this is a no limitless guide, I won't be using a Assault Bleed here. We're just going to do a standard Assault because we're not using a limitless. 
and you just want to use an assault and then another basic followed by a destroy and another basic followed by a full four hit flurry you want to make sure you you do all four hits so that your zerk is ready for the middle crystal you shouldn't have any problems dpsing this crystal down with just a um, simple zerk rotation like that and then now you just want to wait for the heals to come from the from the ground from the blobs so at this point just place a von bomb on the middle crystal and then just wait for the heals to approach the crystal when the first set of heals go in just back off you want to zerk when the third heal appears so there's two when the third one shows up you can zerk drain pot barge the barge damage will get healed but this will time you perfectly to get your decimate and sever damage in place your assault bleed followed by a fury then a flurry for three hits it's important you do it for three hits cancel with a decimate and then hurricane and then it's going to hit you off you then want to freedom because you'll be stunned and then attack the front blobs first so that they stop traveling towards Seriu and then focus on the back ones a little later remember that if you don't get these blobs they will heal the crystals and then all the time you spent up there will uh, sort of go to waste here I like to wait for my barge cooldown barge in and place a flurry bleed as that's going to reduce the zerk cooldown so that we can zerk soon you also want to make sure that you re-vulnerability the boss and just avoid any special attacks that are happening throughout the fight once your zerk is ready since we're not using limitless we're just going to do a zerk without a barge so you just want to build to 50% use an assault and then use a destroy Towards the end of your Zerk, he's going to spawn the first set of hands from the wall again. So just make sure you're avoiding the walls at this point. Again, once you get to about 60k remaining on the phase, you want to use Natural Instinct and then build to full and use a Dragon Battle Axe. Again, just to help us with the damage on the crystals as it does give us a multiplicative melee boost for one minute. So here we're going to Natural Instinct. I got a Relentless proc here, but I'm still just going to use basics as if I was building and then use a, a dragon battle axe if at any point you want to take a res from the giant brith just go ahead and do that if you take your prayer off and res it'll be about a 6k heal otherwise it'll be about a 3k either way if you don't want to use any food you can just do that Again, once you phase, make sure you're full adrenaline, and then you want to jump up the opposite side you went up the first time, because we need to kill the full HP crystal first. Zerk, barge, adrenaline potion. Place your Von Bomb and decimate Sever. Use an assault bleed, followed by a fury and then a destroy. Finish destroy after four hits with a decimate, followed by a flurry for three hits, and then cancel with another ability. Once you finish off the first crystal, just head over to the middle one, place a Von Bomb, and then just build up with some basics, and uh, you can then Quake and wait for Destroy cooldown. Once Destroy is ready, use that, followed by an Assault when that's ready. And that will be the end of the fight. If you have Limitless, of course, you can do it a little bit differently, doing some extra Zerk barge rotations with a Limitless instead of an Adrenaline Potion. But since this is a beginner guide, we're not using Limitless or Dominion Mines or anything like that, just to show that you can still do this with no troubles at all, as long as you follow the steps in this guide. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys all enjoyed that dungeon run. This is going to be the end of my full beginner guide to Elite Dungeons 1. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video and found this helpful if you were looking to learn Elite Dungeons 1. If you have any feedback, just leave it down in the comment section below. It is greatly appreciated. And uh, if you'd like to reach out to me on my stream or on Discord, both of those will be linked down in the description. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.